Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Milan. I'm very happy to see you all here, and I'm very happy to share with you this presentation. Uh, when my colleague Gordan asked me if I wanted to do this, it took me around five seconds to say yes, because this is a subject and a product that I have been involved at in, uh, in my company that I am very proud of and uh, that I am very passionate about. Uh, true confession, I did not check the time frame for the presentation, so I don't know if it will last 25 minutes, 45 minutes, or I don't know, and tr truthfully, I don't care. I just want to pitch you this idea and hopefully maybe you'll like it and see the benefit of it. Okay, uh, the title is a little, I don't know, too, not, not too intuitive. It, uh, the subject is the team and we will go through the presentation and you will see what we thought would be a good thing to do to try to make our teams be happy, be healthy and uh, be awesome. Uh, what was the motivation for this? Well, sorry, it got stuck. Okay, now we're going. Uh, in our company, I come from Schneider Electric, I didn't mention that, uh, from Novi Sad, I have been working there for 10 years. I have done uh, a bit of coding, I have been a Scrum Master, now I'm at, at the position of a team lead. And in our company and in many others, as I imagine, because I have only worked there, uh, you have a lot of uh, tools and means uh, to try to address individuals, so to try to uh, track their progress, to try to define their goals, to try to define their and find out about their career aspirations. You define their performance goals, their development goals, and uh, all in all, the goal of it all is to try to track their progress and try to be a better employee and a better person each day at a time. And you do that on an individual level, even you have in some companies, in ours, from this year, you have a 360 degrees evaluation where the employees evaluate their managers and in that way managers receive valuable feedback on how to become a better manager. On a, sorry. On a company level, you have something similar. You have uh, companies, they uh, try to get a feedback from their employees through some kind of survey. You try to get, uh, which is very important, you have regular feedback loops from their customers to try to see if they are happy with their product, with their services, et cetera, et cetera. They track attrition rate in their company to see how good, how healthy their organization is. You also track some type of performance results, mostly sales, profit, and et cetera, et cetera, and something like net promoter score. But uh, the thing that was missing, and that we also tracked that it was missing, was that we did not have a comprehensive uh, tool or approach to check the health of a team. Uh, I have been working in a team from day one since I've been in the company, and uh, that was my, one of my main drivers as an employee, first as a software developer and after as a manager, is to try to be in a healthy team, because I truly believe while the description on the left that describes what a team is, uh, is quite accurate. I prefer to think about the team like it, as it is described on the right, because we try together to achieve more. And I think that's the real purpose of a team, and that's the real uh, meaning why uh, people form a team, and that is the end goal for, I guess, all of us when we join a team and we form a team. And for me as a manager, there is uh, not much greater pleasure than to see that my team is evolving, that is becoming better and better every day and every day. And uh, to do so, we tried to define an approach, define a process that could help us track the health of the team and to try, based on that, to define some actions, how to make them even better, to address their issues and to work on those issues. Okay, what was our motivation? I took this from, I think, Clockify, yes. This is the amount of hours each of us, mainly in different countries, spend at work. Uh, in total, in average, I would say, 
about more than 60% of our time during the year we spend at work, more than we spend with our family. So it is really important that the environment that we work in, and mainly if you're part of the team on a daily basis, you collaborate and you communicate mainly with your team members. So to try to reach your best, it is really important that the environment in which you work in is really healthy, and that's the team. So this was one of our motivators. Uh, okay, I did not mention this. I'm a major sports junkie, so there will be one or two sports references. Uh, this is a, a good uh, example of, uh, how would I say it, uh, influence of a team on a person, on the individual performance and achievements. This is a, some, no, some may not know, this is Thierry Henry. He was a Arsenal captain and one of the Arsenal legends. So prior to playing for Arsenal, he played in Juventus, spent a year there. He was a major talent, but uh, the culture, the environment at that club did not suit him. So he had some below average uh, statistics, goals, assists, and et cetera, what is measured at football. Then the next year he moved to Arsenal and the rest is history. These, these are some of his statistics and uh, this shows, this is a perfect example that shows how a healthy environment, environment that suits you can help you achieve your full potential. So we tried that uh, also. With this we wanted to help uh, each of our employees to be in a healthy environment, to try to detect if there is an unhealthy environment and why is it so, and what can we do to fix it. So we came up with a process which, was, which is called Team Health Check. It is in production <laughs> today, and we tried to implement it, I think we implemented it a year or a year and a half ago. And what was the purpose of it? We wanted to define a self-evaluation tool for the team, only team members can assess the state of the team. They are the only relevant, and their opinion is the only relevant to detect and to address any issue if within the team. They are the ones that are working with each other. They are the ones that, on a daily basis, can see the good sides and the bad sides of that. And so they are the only ones that can give an honest and valuable opinion about the state of the team. So how did we picture it? We defined it as a combination of a survey and a workshop. I will talk about it more in the next slides. Uh, and as I said, focus was on the things that only team members can assess, nothing from outside. It is not important, even the manager. Manager does not have a, I don't know, uh, a major role in all of this. His role is to try to help the team, uh, conduct the process, he is uh, at the end accountable for it all, that the process is being uh, done and that the end result is uh, the completion of all the steps that are defined within this process, but uh, he does not have a say in evaluation, in defining action items and other steps that are defined, uh, which I will talk about in the next slides. So, as I said, it's an iterative learning process. So this is not something that you do it once and you do it perfectly. No, this is something that you do it once. You see what went good, what was bad, inspect, adapt like in Scrum, and try to do it the next time even better. And as I said as, uh, to the preview of my presentation, we wanted this to be a team's chance to take an honest look in the mirror. As I mentioned, this is mainly and only intended for the team. That's why I highlighted it and <laughs> took uh, even a bigger, uh, slightly bigger font uh, for this because I wanted to emphasize that all of this is done only and mainly because of the team. We want them to increase trust. We want them to increase their psychological safety within the team. We wanted to create a culture of constructive criticism and feedback and we wanted to increase the awareness uh, in the team about the importance of their development as a team. And also, on the other hand, we, we also saw some sort of uh, significance of this process to the people outside the team, and those are some upper management, agile coaches, if you have them or not, because they can uh, take a look outside of the team and 
get an overview of the state of the team and maybe help in some way uh, with guidance, with some advice and something like that. Okay, I will present the process overview and how does it start. It starts, of course, by defining uh, health indicators. Those are the indicators that you will check and that the team itself will assess. Next step is the survey. Uh, in that survey, each team member is obliged to evaluate the health of the team. How do they do that? Well, they evaluate each health indicator that, he, that has been defined. After that, the most important part of the process is the workshop. During the workshop, uh, you engage in an open discussion. When I say you, I mean a team member. You engage in an open discussion and you give the final evaluation of each health indicator. In summary, you give the final evaluation of the health of the team. And after that, you have time between this iteration and the next team health check evaluation or iteration to work on the defined action items and try to improve the things that you addressed and that you defined that needed improvement. And hopefully this step of defining health indicators is done once and the first time you do it, it, it doesn't matter if you saw after the first iteration that it, those health indicators are not really perfect and you need some adjustment, but uh, our, our experience tells us that if you put a little more effort at the beginning in defining those health indicators, you can pretty much get to the point and define everything that is needed to assess the health of the team. Okay, how do you check the health of a team? Well, you need a set of indicators that give enough key information about the health of the team. It's like when you go to the doctors and you want a full body checkup, you do things like you check your blood pressure, you check your heart rate, you check your cholesterol sugar rate, you check your uh, sight, hearing and other stuff. Now, you only want to focus on the fundamental, the most important the things that can give you an exact and the precise state of your body. And in that case, similar, when you check the health of a team, you need a set of fundamental health indicators that can give you a good and a comprehensive look on the health of the team. Okay, how do you define health indicators? In our case, I can give you my or our experience. We gather the group of nine people, including me and including my colleague Ivana, who is here. And uh, we brainstormed. We thought about the things that are good at a team, what are the things that make a, a team good, what are the things, things that uh, are some indicators of a bad uh, atmosphere or, or a bad team. Uh, we gathered a group of experienced people who have in their work uh, come up with both. They have been, uh, they have uh, worked with some teams that have had a better or worse atmosphere or some indicators. And uh, based, on the, our, based on our experience, we defined the fundamental set of common indicators by engaging experienced uh, individuals and we organize working sessions. And that's what I was talking about at the previous slide. You need uh, a little more effort. My experience is that you need a little more, put a little more effort in this phase so that you get these indicators right. If you get them right, uh, then your job is much easier and uh, you will present to your team a set of indicators that will help them assess the true health of their, of their team. If you are, yes, common indicators. I uh, put this in brackets because if you are working in a larger organization like I am, you need to try to define uh, a common indicator because every team is a uh, story for itself and uh, you have departments and segments in a company that do totally opposite type of work and you should try, if you want to apply this approach to the whole company, you should try to uh, define the common uh, set of indicators, indicators that are applicable to all 
to all uh, teams in your company. Okay, what are the some examples of indicators that we defined? We have a total of 12 indicators. Some of them are psychological safety that we wanted to uh, uh, address the trust within the team. What does this indicator tell you? The team members must trust and respect each other. They must feel free to express their opinion. They must feel free to tell one another and uh, if they are doing something wrong and uh, to provide and uh, to receive constructive feedback, even criticism, and without uh, judging, without complaining, without uh, uh, displaying any unwanted behavior and something like that. So this is a, a key factor, and uh, without this, whole this process does not make any sense. If you do not have safety in your team, this is a mandatory thing for this process. If you do not have safety in your team, then this whole process will fail at uh, fail horribly. <laughs> we had a situation in our company where when we wanted to la launch this uh, project, we wanted to get feedback from our team leads, and one of our team leads uh, asked if this could be anonymous. And we said, if you want it to be it anonymous, and if you do not want that your team uh, members express their opinion freely and openly between themselves, then you already have one indicator that you need to work on. Another one is uh, competences or expertise. How competent are the team members to complete the set of work of, that is put uh, in front of the team? Do you have enough skills? Are those skill, are, is your team cross-functional? Do you have uh, experts in certain domains that give you enough uh, freedom and uh, even a buffer to complete all the work that is put in front of the team? Do you have a learning culture in your team? Uh, the, the, that means uh, what is your approach as a manager, as a company, and as a team to learning? Do you give your people enough time to learn new things? Do you, uh, do you, does your team and your team members have a learning culture in the sense that their mindset is a, a growth mindset in, in terms that uh, they will try new things, they will try to learn new things without uh, getting, pushed by the, uh, getting pushed by their managers? Will they, be, will they feel free to learn new things, to propose new things, to say, okay, I need to learn this, I need to learn that? Or will they get a uh, backhand from their manager and say, okay, no, this is not a priority. You can learn at home. You need to focus on the stuff that is really important and that the company sees value and that will bring us profit. Okay. After you define health indicators, uh, then it comes uh, to the first phase that is uh, done by your team Bef uh, before, of, of course. Uh, it is the evaluation, evaluation of the health of your team. You need to find, uh, to have a defined grading system. On this slide, I presented a, a form that we used in our company, and uh, basically you have a traffic light where the red indicates uh, if you want to mark any indicator with red, it means, okay, this is the indicator that, and that I think that we as a team need to work on. There are some major issues regarding this health indicator, and we should define some action items and try to improve it in the near future. If you mark it uh, yellow, it means there are some issues regarding this health indicator, but it is not something that is uh, urgent, that needs to be addressed at the moment, but also we do see some issues and maybe we could address it in, a, some, in some manner, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but in some close time. And greed, although it suggests that it is all good, it is all great, that doesn't have to mean that. It can mean also, okay, we are happy with it at the moment. This is the indicator that we are happy at the moment. The stuff is good regarding this health indicator, but 
we will track it like every other indicator and maybe we can even share some good practices why we think that this is green and share those practices with other teams. And after you have defined the grading system, uh, you organize a survey. You organize a survey uh, for your team members. You, the manner in which you organize that survey is up to you. You can do it on a paper, you can use some form of, I don't know, uh, MS Forms or some other tool online that you can gather insight. But uh, some of the most important uh, rules regarding this phase is that team members must, must evaluate each health indicator because this is a very important stage because this provides us input to the workshop and we want to get the opinion of each, each team member about each health indicator. So it is uh, very important that they uh, feel the, their evaluation and that they evaluate each health indicator. Uh, you can define a time frame for them, you can tell them, okay, you have a week or a day or two or three to do this and think about it, but in our experience it doesn't take more than 15 minutes to do something like this. Uh, maybe the first time when they do it because they are not familiar with the concept, you can give them more time, but in general it should not uh, take, take up too much time of team members to uh, do the field the survey. And, uh, as I said, these results are used as an input for the workshop, which is the main and the most important part of the, of the whole process. Okay, how is the workshop organized? Uh, first of all, entire team needs to participate. This is organized for the team, and they are the only one that can assess and they can give the final judgment on the health of their team. So it is mandatory that the whole team participates, of course not if they are, have uh, good reasons why they ca cannot participate, but you should organize it in some, uh, uh, in some, try to organize it when your all team members are, uh, can attend and the results are not an anonymous. This is a really important uh, feature, or a rule, I would say it's a rule, because we do not want anonymity within our team. We, we, want, we want to build a culture of trust, we want to build a culture of openness, we want to provide and give feedback uh, regularly, and uh, we cannot do that if we tell our team members to not to be honest to each other. They have to be honest. Uh, all of the process is uh, established so they, so they can work and define action items that could uh, make their work better, that could make their work easier, and to make a better environment for their daily work. So regarding time frame, around one to two hours. Maybe if you are doing it for the first time, maybe you will have some more time, but this is something uh, that I found based on my previous experience that you need up to two hours to conduct the workshop. The one of the few roles that a manager has in this whole process is to facilitate and support the whole process. So you start the evaluation period, you uh, provide any guidance, any advice if it is needed, you provide any additional information if it is needed, if you see that uh, the team members do not, uh, uh, have not understood any part of the whole concept, any phase of the concept, how their approach should be to this, and you are basically, you are there to facilitate and to support the whole process. And uh, that is the most important part of your involvement in the whole process. So how do you organize it? You organize an open discussion. Everyone should be heard because this is not something that you should do, I don't know, every two or three weeks like you do a retrospective, you can do it I don't know, twice a year, and when you do it, you should do it with all of your team members uh, attending, and you should do it with all of your team members involved. Because if, you are, if your team members are not involved, then you do not get the whole picture about the state of the team, because not all of your team members have expressed their opinion, and you do not have enough information to get the final assessment on the health of the team. And 
as I mentioned, team lead is neutral in this and should remain neutral. You can provide some additional information if they have any questions regarding the process itself, but regarding uh, the evaluation of any indicator discussion, you should not engage in the discussion. You should let your team members to discuss and to agree on the health indicators and to express their op opinion. And you should not give your opinion uh, regarding any of the health indicators. Sorry. Okay. Uh, this is how it should look like. The visual representation of the process is also very important because you have a wholesome look on the state of the team. Again, it is uh, up to you how you how you want to organize it. Do you want to use a tool? Do you want to use some online form and, and try to visualize the results and the final results? And as you can see on the slide, each of the team members has evaluated each health indicator. I use the grading system that we used in the firm. So green means good, yellow means there are some issues, red means okay, I think that this health indicator is in our team something that needs to be addressed ASAP. And you gather the results, uh, visually represent them to the team, and this is an input, as I said, from the evaluation phase uh, for the workshop. And during the workshop, all team members engage in the discussion and all team members uh, need to express their own opinion. One of the good, I would say, uh, advices that I could give you if you want to implement this when you have an indicator like uh, HI1, uh, when, you have a, an, uh, you, when you have an employee who has marked that indicator uh, op opposite to the major majority of the team, you should let them speak first because you don't want them to be overwhelmed by the com comments of the others because if you let other team members who have all voted the same and put the same health, uh, put the same type of vote for the health indicator, they will overwhelm them and they will definitely affect their judgment and affect their final comment and maybe their final decision on that. When you go through all the health indicators, you, the final stage, I would say, is to collabor collaboratively decide the final assessment for each indicator. So it is up to the team. Again, manager does not have any role in this. The team discusses it, they discuss each indicator one by one, and they define the final outcome or the final assessment or the final grade for that health indicator. And at the end, you have something like this. And this is how it should look like. You have your set of health indicators, you have your final assessments, and after that, when the team has uh, defined their final uh, and put in their final grades for each health indicator, uh, it is time for the team to decide on which health indicators they want to work on. Uh, if you have, I don't know, like we had 12 health indicators and you have marked them six, 60 uh, health indicators have been marked red. This does not mean that you can work or should work on all six health indicators in the upcoming months. No, you can try to use some sort of a grading system, voting or something like that, and to say, okay, I want to work on health indicator four and five. I think those are the most critical ones, and we should define some action items that should br bring uh, this uh, topic to our attention and which should help us by the time that we conduct another team health check iteration that should help us mark this, maybe improve the results reg regarding this health indicator and make it, I don't know, yellow or even green. And which is uh, something that is also really important that, that we wanted to highlight is also that you need to highlight good practices. If you have a healthy team that has, I don't know, minor problems or minor issues and you have, I don't know, 20 health indicators and only two red ones, you don't want to only address these results and set, say, okay, we want to address the bad things and we want to define action items to address those health indicators. No, if you have 18 good 
health indicators, it means that your team is pretty much healthy and you want to celebrate it. You want to share those good practices, you want to highlight the good stuff, and you want to share those results with others. My experience that working in a team, in many cases, we were not aware of the good things that have been done in other teams. In, sadly, in our everyday work, we are focused on the things that are not working very well, and we try to fix them, and uh, rarely we focus on the good stuff, on the things that are good, that we are doing in a great manner, and that can be very, very influential on, on the engagement, on the motivation, on the happiness even of your team members. So a very important part of the whole process is to try to define the good practices also. You need to say, okay, these are the things that we are doing really good, and I think that other teams should hear about it. And we will define it, and that is why transparency about the process is really important, and that these results are shared not amongst only team members, and that these final results are shared within your company. And you want to share good practice, you want to learn from each other, team from team, and to try and improve all together. Okay, I will go, I made a small chart about the roles and responsibilities. So if you are a team member, you participate in each phase of, the, in each phase of this process. In the evaluation or the survey phase, you ev evaluate each indicator. As I said, it is mandatory for each team member to evaluate each health indicator so we can, give, so we can get the, the comprehensive look on the state of the team and so that we can get an opinion of each team member. Uh, when it comes to workshop, team member, his role is to engage in the discussion, to be open-minded, to provide and give feedback, to uh, defend their opinions, to express their opinions on uh, the comments of other team members and to try to engage in a way that will get, that will provide a greater value to the team and that will help uh, give insight to other team members and maybe affect their opinion and help them reach their common and uh, joint understanding of each health indicator. And the last part, which is also very important because without defining growth plan and the Highlighting good practice, we have done nothing because if we only assess our uh, health indicators and, we, and if we only assess the state of the team without defining any action items that could help us in the future improve things, we have done nothing. So a really important part is also to define the growth plan in form of some action items and to highlight good practices that can help maybe even other teams be better. And in terms of a team lead or a manager, your role is to organize and explain the evaluation phase, which means you have to explain the whole process, what is the point, why, do should, why they should do it, and really important throughout the process, you have to buy into this process. If your team members see that you do not believe in the value of this, they will not believe. Because working with technical professionals, I have uh, learned that most of this stuff are really, really boring to them. So if you see <laughs> that if they see that it is boring to you at the start and you do not believe in this, then you have missed the whole point of the process and you will gain nothing from this. You will only waste your time, you will waste the time of your team members, so you will gain nothing. So from the beginning, you have to uh, how to say, to sell them the idea, you have to show them what is the true value of this process. One thing, <coughs> one thing that we kept in mind when we defined this regarding the thing that they are uh, mostly bored by this stuff is to try to set, uh, try to keep it as simple as possible. Try to define health indicators the optimum number. You do not want two or three health indicators because you will not get a holistic look or you cannot have a holistic approach to the health of the team if you have two or three health indicators. Like when you go to the doctor, you will not only check your blood pressure and say, okay, I'm fine, but your cholesterol, sugar rate are aging or something like that. You need a 
comprehensive set of health indicators, but on the other hand, you don't want to overwhelm your team, because if you give them a survey with uh, 25 health indicators, they will mark the first five and all of the others will be green, because they will get bored and again, you will gain nothing from it. So you have to try to um, calculate what is the medium in all of this, how to uh, on one hand get a good look at the health of the team and on the other hand try to engage your team members as, as much as you can. And regarding team lead, as I said, besides organizing and explaining the evaluation, the whole process during the workshop, as I said, he does not participate in the discussion, he does not share his opinion or her opinion, and uh, he does not or she does not participate in the evaluation or the agreement on the final evaluation, he is there to facilitate. If they have any questions regarding the process, you are there to help them. If they have any other questions, you can also help them, but you should not affect their judgment, you should not affect the results and especially action plans. You can maybe help them afterwards in uh, reaching some of their goals and uh, completing those action items, but during the process you are there to facilitate and throughout the whole process you are accountable for it to be conducted. To be conducted in a su success, to be conducted successfully, which means you need to engage your people, you need to sell them the idea, you need to show them the value of it, and you need to, of course, conduct each and a, each step of uh, the process. Okay, I wanted to highlight this because these are some similarities with Scrum. Like uh, Scrum, you do not have many rules in this process, but it's really in easy to understand, but it is difficult to master because you will give them the survey, you will give them the workshop, but if they are not interested, like we had in many teams, they will uh, conduct the survey, they will mark it all green, they will come to the workshop, they, they will mark it all green again, and they will say all is good. Again, you have lost your time, but you have to, again, sell them the idea, to show them the value of it all, and it's a continuous learning process. You will not do it all in your first try. You will fail, probably, in some aspects, like I have, and I believe many of my <laughs> teammates, any other and other team leads in my company, but with each iteration, you learn, you learn, and you try to improve the process itself. And when you improve the process and the approach to it, you will improve the results, and the end results will be better and better, and your team members will be more engaged, and you will see the true value of this. And the most important thing I would say is it requires honesty, it requires trust, and it requires transparency to succeed. You need to be honest to each other, you need to have a healthy environment in your team, you need to have uh, team members that are free to express their opinion, you need to tell them that this is for them and done by them, and if you <laughs> succeed in uh, delivering their, the, succeed in uh, selling this idea in terms of that their approach to this is really honest and they trust each other and they are transparent and ready to share their feedback and to engage in the discussion and try to really improve the things in their team, then you will most probably succeed with all of this. Okay, some pitfalls or something that this is not. This is not intended for rating team. You should not do this as an intro to a blaming game. Uh, you should not blame each other also when we assess any health indicator, you should not say, okay, this is because this guy sucks or that guy sucks and if we fire them, all, all is good in the team, no. This is something that you have to look each health indicator as a team from a point of view of a team and in that sense you need to rate each health indicator, but this is not a rating system, this should not be used to compare it with other teams. Uh, first of all, each team is uh, individual. This data is all subjective and not all of us are assessing our, even ourselves in the same manner. Some are more uh, 
judgmental about our capabilities, about our flaws or our virtues. Others are have, uh, an, I don't know, neck, some some sort of a peachy look on their abilities, on their characters, and something like that. And in the team, on the team side, it can be the same, because some teams may say, okay, this is working great, this is splendid in our team, also, although there are some problems there, but they are not aware of them and are too kind to each other and do not want to address some issues. Other teams are more open and will address and are ready to address some issues and will have an honest uh, look and will honestly assess their state. So you cannot compare two teams. It is not intended for the comparison with other teams. It is intended for the team itself. It's a subjective data. It can be judged only by the team itself, no, not the outside, not even the manager. He is there to facilitate, he is there to help them address the issues that have, they have detected. He is not there to tell them, okay, you have plenty of red, red indicators, this is really bad, it is all your fault. No, we can, I can help you, I will help you throughout this process. You, you are there to define the action item or the growth plan and I, as a manager, am there to help you reach it or reach your goals and complete the action items that have been defined. And what do we want? We want a transition from a fixed mindset to the growth mindset. This is something that is addressed and mentioned in my company many times, but on an individual level. We, have, we haven't, prior to this, tried to address uh, this issue and to try to how make a transition in on a team level from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. So as I said on the, some of the first slides, what do you want to do with this process? You want to uh, increase self-awareness. You want to uh, increase, uh, you want to encourage people to give and receive constructive feedback. You want to create an open environment in your team and you want to emphasize the importance of team development. And that is done by the transition from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset, again, not on an, on an individual level, but on the team level. So, again, I have one more slide, and it's another sports reference. What is the goal? I don't know how many of you can recognize these two teams, but on the left you have the Spain national team from that has won the Euro European Championship in 2022. They were not among the favorites, but they had a coach that believed in them, that has set up a system that works for them for, I don't know, 15 years, and they have done a major uh, generation shift. They have uh, brought some of the old players, uh, have uh, ended their careers, they have been replaced with some younger players, but they have come, they have came, they came into a healthy environment, into a healthy team, and that has helped them reach the top and won the championship. Even better example is the Greece national team from the European Championship of 2004. They were, they were the major underdogs in that competition, but they believed in each other, they used the power of the team, and it helped them make the biggest success in the history of Greek football and won the European Championship. And I have finished 50 minutes prior to the end. So thank you if you have any questions. Okay. Okay, thank you, Milena. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a tricky one. Well, I would say that in this case, like in many other cases, if you are doing Scrum or Agile, it is a common problem. Not all people believe in the value of Agile in, I don't know, sprint planning, mostly retrospective. They hate retrospectives. 
and you as each team member, you need to show them the value of it. How do you approach it? Well, uh, as I said, first of all, you as a manager or team lead uh, need to show them that you truly believe in this idea, that you truly believe that this will give them uh, added value. You truly believe that if they work on this, they will all benefit from it. Or okay, you will still you can still have some team members that say, okay, I don't still still don't believe it, in, in it. I don't care about it. I'm a technical person. I don't want to do a survey. I don't want to do a workshop. I want to code. I want to debug. I don't care about all of this. I will mark it all green, and that is it. And you just have to be fine with it. But if the majority of the team is involved. In time, if you do it uh, iteration from iteration, hopefully you will get that one person also to become a believer in the whole process and maybe in time they will also be, uh, they will raise an interest in, in the process itself. Maybe when you do one inter iteration and when you see the set of action items that have been defined, maybe they will say, okay, this is not even bad, this is good, these are some things that really affect me, that affect the team. Maybe next time I can uh, be a little more supportive and try to engage more in the whole process. Okay. The second one, I talked about this with a colleague of mine prior to the presentation. I can give you two examples. One example is learning. In our company, a major problem is uh, that uh, we have an enormous backlog of stuff that we need to do. And we are, well, this year we are good, but in the past few years we have been always chasing deadlines. And the first thing that suffered in most of the teams has been the learning. We tried to implement the learning culture. Uh, learning culture. We wanted to emphasize the importance of uh, self-improvement, of uh, gaining new knowledge and something like that. But uh, when the push comes to shove and we need to <laughs> choose what type of activity we will do, the trainings and self-improvements are the first to suffer and the first to be removed. So that is the issue that has been recognizing in many teams because they feel, teams feel that uh, they are not supported enough by their manager and by the organization to try to work on their self-improvement. And in that case, uh, we tried to, in my team, let's say, we tried on a quarterly basis when we plan our quarter we try to raise the importance of learning and try to put it in on the same level as, I don't know, any feature that came from our uh, projects or from our customers. And we wanted our team members at the beginning to allocate time for their self-improvement. And we defined the development goals that should address this issue. And in that way, we wanted to emphasize the importance of learning and show them that we really care. And first, and uh, most important thing is to give them time for their self-improvement process. And the other thing, I have been part of the development team. We are a huge company and many of our development teams have struggled with the indicator that uh, is purpose because plenty of our teams, including my team, has not had many uh, collaboration and communication di directly with the clients and uh, they struggled uh, uh, in some uh, sometimes they struggle to see the real value because they have been doing the work every day uh, hardly working uh, working hard working hard on their um, own bugs I don't know new features but because we are not in front of the clients, we have, uh, do not have that much customer collaboration, they, they could not see the end value of the things that they did. So one of the approaches was we talked with our project teams and we wanted them to provide us a faster and more frequent feedback loops from our customers. We wanted to show our teams that things that they do are really important. We wanted to tell them, okay, uh, we just received an email from a client. They sent us their feedback on the feature that you have been developing. They said it was great. They are using it in this form. We 
organize some uh, customer calls with our clients where they also provide us direct feedback to team members and it really helped them to gain perspective of the purpose they have as a team in a larger organization. Okay. What to do if the team cannot agree upon the final grant for the particular health indicator? Honestly, I have not had this situation, but again, from a perspective of a manager, I would say try to engage as less possible, try to give them the power, try to give them some additional insights, some guidance on how to get a final agreement on a particular health indicator, maybe some voting system. Okay, you have, I don't know, 11 people in the team vote. If six people vote yes, then that's the final grade, or something like that. But uh, from my experience, we did not have many situations like this. People are quite aware of the problems in their team, and in most health indicators, they voted the same. Okay. Is there a risk of making more damage to the team than benefits by using wrong health indicator or teams? Just to try to understand the question, sorry. Uh, well, I emphasize the importance. If you mean uh, wrong health indicator, the health indicator that does not give you a real uh, information about the state of the team, I emphasize the importance of the process of the stage uh, of the phase of the process where you define your health indicators. It is really important that you engage your experienced people, not only managers, but uh, people that have been working uh, in teams and have uh, a large experience of working in a good or even in a bad team, and so that they can, in most cases, they know what it takes to, for a team to be good. They know what are the key indicators that make some team good or bad, but in, in our case, we organized a workshop, we brainstorm, we define the set of health indicators, and after that, we also organized additional feedback loop to get uh, feedback from all the team members in our company and to tell us their opinion about the defined health indicators, and based on that feedback, we define the final set of indicators. But again, this is a learning process. If you do it wrong in a first iteration, I said it would be great if you did it only once, and you define your health indicators only once, but if, if you saw that you failed at the first try and you defined some wrong, uh, wrong uh, health indicators, then you reiterate and try to make it better the second time. But hopefully it will not make any serious damage to the team. How much time? Yes. It stresses people, uh, and I said you should keep it as simple as possible. You should keep it simple as possible in terms of the survey. It should be very simple, like two or three possible answers, optimum number of health indicators, and in uh, terms of time consumption, it should be evaluation, should take up to 20, min 20 minutes, and the uh, workshop itself about up to two hours, maybe the first time when you do it, maybe it will take more time, but up to two hours every six months, I don't think that is too much to ask. Do we have any other questions? Yeah? Which one? Well, I don't see it here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I will read the question. Okay, well, I answered this one. How often do you do the evaluation in your firm? We wanted to do it quarterly, but because it's a holistic approach and 
it requires time for the action items to be implemented and to have an effect on the results. So we then learned that it should be every six months. Okay, what if there's just one yellow feedback for one of the health indicators? Should it be ignored? Can the given health indicator be marked as red? Well, if you, okay, I will try to explain if, if I understood the question correctly. You mean if all the team members uh, marked it green and only one team member marked it yellow? Well, common sense is that that health indicator can be marked green, but as I said, the first step in that case on the workshop is to try to give the priority to the pe pe uh, person who marked it yellow and to try to give them the opportunity to, to express their opinion. In some cases, uh, people, again, because technical people don't like this stuff, something, sometimes they uh, fly past these rules and explanations and everything, and in some cases they don't even understand some health indicator, and maybe they marked it green, but they didn't understand it well. So it is really important to try to give the priority to the people that marked it the opposite to the majority, and maybe that will give additional insight to the others and the final score, the final evaluation for that health indicator may be, in the end, yellow. Okay, does a team manager in your company participate in a performance review, grade promotion, or salary review of his team? Yes, but this we wanted to make this uh, totally independent from that process that is uh, on a company level defined and that is something that we all do, but this is something that uh, we wanted to address the health of the team and the health indicators are defined in that manner that are not uh, related to the individual performance of each team member. The, those health indicators are uh, addressed by the team and are only applied to the on a team level, not on an individual level. Okay, uh, most common challenges you personally have had in implementing this and how have you overcome them? Most common challenge is to try to engage people and try to make them and see the true value of this all. The best solution that I have come up to by uh, so far is that we try it, we try it for the first time, they see what they did, they see where they failed, they see what they did, uh, what was the good uh, about the whole process, and in the next iteration, the confidence level and the motivation and engagement level is higher. Okay, what is your opinion if we would like to define a similar approach for team which include customers? Well, I said in one of the slides that if you are working in a larger organization, you should define a common set of health indicators that can be applied to teams that are in uh, different types of work and in different types of uh, department segments and et cetera. But in some cases, I, m our company included, we the defined set of health indicators currently need some adjustment to be applied and to provide value for the teams that are directly uh, collaborating with the customers. On which green indicator are you most proud? Happiness and fun. <laughs> have teams been consulted? Yes, we have uh, uh, done, as I mentioned, uh, we have formed a project team, as you can say, it, of nine people that worked on this. And when we pilot, when we pilot, uh, define the pilot version, we uh, wanted to give, uh, to receive feedback from uh, our experienced team members and from other team leads. And based on their feedback, we adjusted the health indicators. But the process itself has been pretty good uh, how, how do I say it? It has be it can, the teams had no major problems with the process itself and the time consumption of the process. Okay, that is it. I think there are no more questions.
unless you guys have some questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, just one more thing. I would like to emphasize that on the first floor you have, uh, regarding the treasure hunt, you have the maps, go get some refreshments and there you can find the maps and your treasure hunt can continue. And thank you. <laughs>